Hi there, Lindsay here. Today I want to share a really fun technique with you that I think might help if you struggle with uh, painting watercolors and losing your drawing or getting your values right. And we are going to use the help of acrylic ink for this. And I'll give you some things you can substitute in case you don't have that. And I'll also list all the supplies I used in the video description. And you can find these supplies at our sponsor, jerrysartorama.com. I'll even put a coupon code in the video description in case you want that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use some colors by Lucas and we're going to choose colors that are earthy and tend to granulate and granulate means that it gives you this gorgeous texture on the paper. But I wanted to make sure I had all of my shadows and highlights taken care of before I did that because once I put the watercolor down, I really want to let the paint do its thing. We're also going to use some granulation medium that will help the paint do its thing or help colors granulate that don't tend to granulate very well. So what I've done here is I've just put some purple acrylic ink in a palette. You can use a, a plastic Tupperware lid, whatever you have really. And um, the reason I wanted to put it in a palette is so that I can dilute it as needed. If you don't have acrylic ink, what you can do is just take your um, acrylic paint, like in a, a purple, or you could even use a black if you want, but I like to have a color and purple is very transparent like watercolor but very intense and um, you'll just want to water it down. You don't have to worry about le about your paint underbinding when you're using it on paper so don't worry about that with acrylics. Don't buy um, acrylic ink just for this project if you're not sure you really love it just uh, use your acrylic paint if you already have some on hand. So I'm starting in by going in with a round watercolor brush. This is one of the Princeton Snap watercolor brushes in a size 6 but it's pointy so you can get a good a good um, you know small detail with it and I'm putting in all my darkest values so the area in the Statue of Liberty's crown there where it's really dark behind the ear I really want to make sure that I have the lights and darks or my values taken care of at this stage of the game now there's something I'm always telling my students and that's value is king and what that means is that you can have your colors crazy in your painting but if your lights and darks are right if your values are right the painting's gonna look good by the way if you would like to try my classes out and save some money. I'll be running a Labor Day special. If you use the coupon code LD19, you can save 40% off any class now through September 3rd. I'll put that coupon code and all that information in the video description so you don't need to write it down right now. So as you can see on the paper, I'm getting some lighter purple values. So what I've done is I've simply added some water to my acrylic ink. Like I mentioned before, you don't have to worry about thinning it too much if you're working on paper. Because paper's porous, it's going to bond and it's still not going to lift up when we put our watercolors on top. That's why I'm using acrylics rather than watercolor. Now, if you have acrylic ink, or if you have uh, India ink, or any type of waterproof ink, that will work just fine for this. So look at your stash and see what you have. The basic uh, principle of this is that you want to be putting these values down on your paper using a product that is not going to repel your watercolor, but is also not going to dissolve when you paint over it. So um, I wouldn't want you to do all your shading and say colored pencil because a colored pencil would repel your watercolor. Um, if you did this in a shade of watercolor, you could if it's a staining watercolor. So for instance, I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel that is doing a, a bottle of olive oil in a grisaille technique, and we use neutral tint because that doesn't tend to, um, uh, tend to lift once you paint over it, but this is absolutely guaranteed not to lift, and it's just, so it's a little bit easier. You could also use uh, Derwent Ink Tense if you want, because that doesn't lift once you've liquefied it. So, you know, look through your stash. You probably have something that will work, even if you don't have this exact Dr. P.H. Martin's um, acrylic ink that I'm using right now.
Once your value under painting is dry, we can begin with our watercolor work. I'm going to use some colors I don't typically use, but granulate quite well on their own. I'm using Gold Ochre from Lucas. I'm also going to use Cobalt Green. That's a very granulating, um, kind of a spring, between a spring and an earthy green. I'm going to use Cobalt Turquoise as well, because that's such a nice fresh color. And I'm going for the almost... Um, patinaed copper look of the Statue of Liberty. And here, what I'm adding to these colors is a granulation medium. And this is a product by Winsor & Newton. I think other companies make it too, uh, but what it does is it really um, increases the separation of the pigment particles in the water. The last color we're going to use, I don't think I've ever used before. It's called Caput Mortuum, and it is a deep, deep, um, almost rusty burgundy, type of uh, brown, and I just thought it was really nice for when I want those darker shadows. Now you're going to take a nice juicy absorbent brush and wet the entire painting, uh, the entire shaded area, not the background. The reason we use the acrylic paint is because this way we don't have to worry about any of those shadows dissolving. And also because I'll be able to put down lots of watercolor, lots of water, and um, I don't have to worry about losing my shadows. The earth tones that we're using do granulate and um, give us that gorgeous texture on their own, but colors that do that also have another characteristic, and that's of being a little bit more opaque than other watercolors. Any of your iron-based colors, any of your mineral-based colors, they're going to tend to sit on top of the paper, and that's why they tend to be a little bit more opaque, whereas your dye-based colors tend to absorb into the fibers of the paper, and they're super transparent. They also are difficult to lift. So I figured also the um, uh, upside of this would be if I got too much color somewhere, then I could always go in and scrub it out, like if I lo lost a highlight. Um, but since these colors are pretty mellow, you really don't have to worry about that. So what I want you to do is look at the reference photo that's linked down below, and you can use that as a guide for where to put your color. Or you can hop over to my blog and you can see a still photo of my finished painting so that you can, um, you can look at that as well. So it, all the resources will be linked down below. The key is to have that paper wet and then drip your colors into it and try not to mess with the colors too much. Your brush really isn't doing much of the coloring. The water that's on the paper is doing the work. As long as you only wet the paper where you want your paint to go, that's the only place it's going to go. It will follow the path of least resistance. Try and use more yellows where you want highlighted or raised areas and use more of the browns as you're getting into the shadows. I like to put the browns in last because they are so strong. Your greens and turquoise can go throughout because that's going to be the local or base color of that, um, that statue. So have some fun, don't overmix, don't overwork, and let the water do the painting for you.
once the watercolor layer is dry, you probably notice some fading with the pigments. That's pretty typical when you're working with a really wet background or really wet area. Your colors will shift a little bit, um, a little bit lighter. And then with the quality of these colors, which are earth tones and sedimentary, they will cover up some of the purple that you have in your underpainting. So what I'm doing now is I'm using a dip pen and dipping right into the bottle of acrylic ink and adding some sharper details. I really wanted to bring some emphasis around the eyes, mouth, uh, nose, facial, facial features, and also get some detail in the hair. So any place where you feel like you want to pump up the detail, darken the values, you can go ahead and do that with a dip pen. If you're not comfortable using a dip pen, you could go ahead and use a felt tip marker, any sort of fine liner that you have. You're not going to be going over this again with watercolor, so it would be all right if um, you chose a, a marker or something that was water-based. Um, if you do think you might want to go over again with watercolor, then I try to find a um, waterproof medium. I'm just using the same color that I started with because I know it's going to be harmonious with what I already have down in my painting. To keep my hand steady and prevent smudges, I have a piece of scrap paper laid down under my hand. This way I can rest my hand on the table, right on the painting, without worrying about transferring any lotions or anything from my hand to the paper, and also to keep my hand steady as I do this fine pen work. If your lines feel too harsh, you can soften them with a damp brush. You can also use your palette again and some thinned down acrylic ink to add subtle shades that you want to put here and there. For these darkest values, I am using my brush loaded up full strength with the purple acrylic ink. You'll find that you probably want to reinforce these darkest values as you go. And if you weren't brave enough the first time around, you can go in and add some darker shadows any place you need them. Hope you enjoy painting with me today and that this value lesson was instructional and helps you with your next painting. Getting those dark darks in there and your light highlights right off the bat can really help you strengthen your compositions. If you are curious about any of the products I use today, you can find them linked down below to our sponsor, jerrysartorama.com, along with a 20% off coupon code. So check that out. And if you'd like to take another class with me, I've got a sale going on 40% off with coupon code LD19 now through September 3rd at my teachable school. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.